What's up guys, it's Instinct here, and today I'll be showing you guys how to do this Meteor Effect and Cinema 4D. So I did this render a couple days ago, and I really like how the Meteor Effect turned out, so I thought I'd make a tutorial so you guys know how to do it. So this tutorial will work in any version of Cinema 4D, you guys do not need any plugins. I will leave a link in the description to the Lightroom, and I will leave a link in the description for the materials. However, the materials are my material pack, and it is not free, however, everything else is. So with all that being said guys, let's jump right into the tutorial. So to start off guys, what you guys want to do is you guys want to hold down on this cube and grab a sphere. From here, go ahead and select the sphere and change the segments to about 500. And go to display and go to ground shading and you guys will see what that does if I go out of the camera. You guys can see it makes a ton of geometry, which is what we want because that's how we get the displacement and rough edges. So from here, what we want to do is we want to click this green cube right here. This will make a subdivision surface and we can drag the sphere into the subdivision surface like that. And it will just make it even smaller. I just want to note, if you guys have a bad computer, you guys might want to lower your segments as this does take a lot on your computer. So if you guys have a very bad or budget friendly computer, I would recommend turning the segments down if it lags a little bit too much. So. From here, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and hold down on this bend right here and get a displacer. And then go ahead and drag the displacer into the sphere. Go ahead and I'm going to uncheck the subdivision surface so it doesn't lag as much. And we're going to go to shading, click this arrow, click noise, click this thumbnail, and then go to blister turbulence. You guys can use the scroll wheel to scroll through all the, um, the noises, but um, I'm going to go to Blister Turbulence because that is the one that gets the meteor effect the best in my opinion. So from here, we're gonna change the global scale to 700%. And you guys can kinda already start to see the, um, the effect. Now what we wanna do from here is scroll down and crank the contrast up a ton this just so that you guys can start seeing the sphere a little bit so I would say something around there is about good around 60% and you can see that it's starting to get an abstract shape now what we can do from here is go to um, scroll up and you guys can change the seed if you guys want to I'm gonna go with 667 that's looking good and then what we can do is go ahead and click the displacer and then go to object and change the height. You just crank this up a little bit to about 20. And there we go. We basically have our meteor effect. Now what we can do is go to display, go to ground shading, turn the subdivision surface on and it will just make everything a lot smoother. Now if we go ahead and click this button, we can give this a test render. And this is what it's looking like. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and apply the material. Now, again, if you guys don't want to buy the premium material pack, the Absolute Mayhem pack, you guys can go ahead and get an alternative material, or any grunge material will work for this. But for this tutorial, I'm going to be using Moonrock V3 for my Absolute Mayhem pack. And we're going to go ahead and make a few adjustments here. So go ahead and double click on the material. And go ahead and turn Reflectance off. Go ahead and turn bump on. Go ahead, go to color and just copy the shader like so. Go to bump. Go click this arrow right here and go to paste shader. And put this at 100%. And then we're going to go ahead and uncheck sub polygonal displacement. And go ahead and crank this up to like 50. And from there, we should be good to go. So go ahead and Put this onto the sphere like so and go ahead and click cubic and seamless and let's run this out and see what it looks like so it's a little bit too grainy so what you guys can do is go ahead and turn the bump down a little bit but i quite like the grain it's just a tad too much so i'm going to go ahead and uncheck subdivision surface so that it doesn't lag and then rotate it to a different spot and see how it looks all right so that is looking really nice 
uh, like a meteor. So now what you guys want to do is you guys, if you guys want to take this a step further, you guys can go ahead and uh, go to MoGraph and go to Cloner. Hold Alt and click Cloner and that will put it into the Cloner for you. And I turned off Subdivision Surface just so it doesn't lag. And go ahead and click Object and go to Mode and click Grid Array. And put the count at 2 across the board. So we'll just put these all at 2. Like so. Then go to Cloner, go to MoGraph, go to Effector, go to Random. And go to click random, go to parameter, and change these all to like random numbers like 350, maybe like negative 70, and then like maybe tab and like 400. And then go to rotation, and we can do the same thing, just kind of rotate these as well, just random numbers. Rotate these around, go out of the camera angle, and now it's looking a little bit too big. And what we can do is scale them down, or we can just move them back or rotate them. It's really up to you guys. Um, I will say these are a little bit too big, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and go into the sphere and scale this down. Um, scale this down. Like so. For some reason, this is being weird. So I'm going to pull this out of the cloner real quick. And I have Z selected, that's why. Um, make sure X, Y, and Z is selected, then it will scale um, all the way down. And it's going to lose its shape a little bit, but we, what we can do is go ahead and go back into the displacer and boost this up back just a little bit, like maybe like 16. And then turn this subdivision surface back off, accidentally turned it on, and then put it back into the cloner and turn it on. And Actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off to rotate it a little bit. And just find an angle that you guys want. So something like... Um, something like that would look good, I think. Like that. Go ahead and turn this on, and go ahead and click this button to render. That's basically it for the tutorial, guys. If you guys like this tutorial on how to make these meteors in Cinema 4D, then please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.